this question says, uh, when tightening a bolt, you push perpendicularly on a wrench with a force. Okay, let me just diagram it to make sure I didn't miss anything. So there's some kind of bolt or something that you're trying to turn. And there's some kind of a wrench over it. And it's saying that we push perpendicularly. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming something like this with some amount of force at a distance of uh, some d, uh, 0 0.11 meter from the center of the bolt. Okay, how much torque are you exerting relative to the center of the bolt? Okay, uh, let me see what this choice is. Um, so I can calculate the magnitude. Is it, ah, that's the unit, okay. So the definition of torque is uh, the displacement cross product with F. And here, since it looks like they're just asking for the magnitude, uh, we can just go with the absolute value version, which is magnitude of torque is the magnitude of the displacement times magnitude of force times the sine theta, where the theta is the angle between the two vectors. And here, because they're saying perpendicularly, so this is 90 degrees, so, um, the answer is fairly simple. Uh, displacement, 0 0.11 meter times force, 185 newtons. Um, I think that's a 20.35. In a static equilibrium, typical question tends to involve more forces than that, but this one, I guess, is simple. Oh, um, and the unit, it's a displacement in meters times newton, so it should be newton times meter. So, okay, that's one question. Um, and the other question, I think, uh, is a similar one, question 2-5. Um, so, it says, two children push on opposite sides of a door during play. Okay. Um, all right, I think I'm going to try to draw a top-down view. Uh, so, if here's a hinge. Imagine this is the door, and they're saying they uh, both push horizontally, so we don't have to worry about the dimension that's, uh, you know, um, all the motion is in this uh, plane of view, in the top-down view, um, and perpendicular to the door, okay, that makes things easier. So one child is pushing with uh, that amount of force, uh, oh, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, at distance 0 0.6 meters, okay. It, it, and the other child is pushing with, uh, ah, they don't tell us the amount of force, but they tell us the distance of 0 0.45 meters. Uh, what force must the second child exert to keep the door from moving? Ah. So um, it's a static equilibrium question. And in a static equilibrium question, you impose two conditions that net force is equal to zero, and that net torque is equal to zero. And um, how much attention you need to pay to this condition, it depends on the setup. Um, in a setup like this one, where it's describing an object that has some kind of a hinged support, and what it amounts to is that in a setup like this, there can be basically as much hinge force as needed to make this requirement hold. So once you recognize that, then, um, then we don't really pay attention to this requirement because it's like with a normal force, you know, when an object is sitting on top of some surface, then you know there will always be enough normal force to keep it at, you know, not digging to the surface. And um, in a static equilibrium question set up that involves some kind of a hinged arrangement, that will also be the case. So we only really need to worry about making the net torque equal to zero. And because we are hoping to ignore this force altogether, we'll make this to be our center of rotation. That way it doesn't matter how much hinge force there is, um, it's going to provide a zero torque. So, um, so we've done um, first step of um, the standard strategy. We've already, this what I've been sketching out, I've 
draw done it in the style of free body diagram and I can kind of use it as a free body diagram with this as a center of rotation. I see two forces drawn. Um, and I guess there isn't really access to define because we are going to be ignoring the translational version of Newton's second law. But I should specify which uh, torque direction is positive and which is negative. I'll say counterclockwise is uh, positive and the clockwise direction is negative. Okay, uh, that's my um, kind of axis and uh, I don't have any, so that's step number two. I don't have anything to decompose. So step number three is the step number four. I need to write down Newton's second law equations. And in this case, it's the rotational version. So we say the angular acceleration, which for static equilibrium, keep the door from moving, is zero, is equal to the net torque divided by the rotational inertia. Here, you know, um, I guess here and all all the static equilibrium questions, it's really this that you are, the requirement you are holding that you are interested in. So let me write out the expressions for the net torque. So, so you know, rotation inertia doesn't matter because numerator will go to zero. Um, so for the net torque, I, I use the definition of torque, um, the displacement vector, cross product with the force. Or in this case, because I'm already accounting for the directions separately with a sign, so I'm really only interested in the absolute value of the torque. So torque is um, the form that I uh, really like to use in many of the static equilibrium situations is the lever arm times the force and uh, this in absorbs the the sine theta into the expression for the displacement and all of here you know the lever arm is this lever arm is that so it's kind of easy um so okay the torque due to 15 newton force that's going to be plus 0 0.6 meter times 15 newtons and the torque due to this unknown force f is going to be minus uh, 0 0.45 meter times uh, F. And I guess this question is simple enough that I don't have to do this, but let me do this as a demonstration because it's uh, quite common in situations involving um, static equilibrium that you have more than two forces and more than a single equation to solve. So it's quite common to see something like, well, maybe not. Um, I guess the three equations is maybe usual. Um, in any case, um, sometimes the algebra gets uh, cumbersome. And SageMath is a computer algebra system. You can actually use it to do that clunky algebra for you. Uh, so let me demonstrate that. I'm going to declare the symbols that I'm going to use. Uh, let me, I guess, um, declare everything as symbols. So um, it's just for the sake of uh, illustrating its power. So I'm going to uh, call this R1, call this F1, call this R2, and just keep this at, oh, wait, wait it's a, it is F2. So call this F2. So my symbols are F2, uh, R1, F1, and R2. So the equation I have is uh, zero, is equal to, there's a distinction between assignment and the logical statement that one side is equal to the other, um, plus zero, not 0 0.6, R1 times F1 minus, R2 times F2. And the way I'm writing this equation, I'm basically treating all my uh, quantities as positive uh, quantities. So once I have that, I can solve this equation for one of the unknowns. I can solve it for uh, F2. And let me store this into solution. By the way, if you don't know the syntax for these as a lot of people don't the first time you use it and i think this is my third semester or so using sage math more in earnest um it has a built-in documentation so if you do something like a help solve um, then it'll tell you 
uh, what the syntax for the solve function is. And one of the most useful thing in the documentation is that it'll also give you usage examples. So, you know, it has all these, maybe it's useful, maybe it's not. It's the first time I see these, sometimes, you know, it, it like my eyes glaze over, but it gives you examples, which kind of show you, you know, everything I was doing, you know, declaring the variable and all that stuff. So, um, so it's got use the built-in documentation um, it, it's really useful so so with that uh, so i have solution worked out here okay so i'm looking at my first element i need to plug in the values of um, the things i have so i need to plug in or substitute in r1 is equal to 0 0.6 meters, r2 is equal to 0 0.45 meters, and f1 is equal to 15 newtons. Then this should be the answer. 20 newtons should be the, um, the force that the second child can ex exert to keep the door from moving. And by the way, you know, this is a, a simple algebra. Um, but again, this is a demonstration of a tool for questions where the algebra might not be so simple. So 